Okay, now it's time to move on to receivers. I've got Mark McDonald and Jerome Erdman with me. Uh, they're going to be working through three different drills. Uh, Mark, let's talk about the first drill that we're going to see today. I'm not sure what you're doing. What are you doing? First drill. Oh, we're doing goal post, goal post drill. drill. Uh, concentration drill again. Uh, receiver will be behind the goal post. The ball's coming towards him. Uh, you got to look either side of the goal post. You got to catch it with your hands. Forces you to catch it with your hands, which is a big part of, uh, of what we're doing. What's the uh, second drill we're going to see today, Jerome? Uh, second drill is a concentration drill. We'll have two lines of receivers. They'll be offset by a yard. They'll be running towards each other. The receiver at the back will have to catch the ball while the receiver in the front will screen him. So it's a, just a concentration on trying not to drift. They stay on the line and being able to catch the ball in traffic. And what is the third drill that we're going to see today? Uh, third drill is a star drill. It teaches the kids to either, either a regular cut, which is chopping your feet and uh, getting low, or a speed cut, which is uh, turning on your inside foot and getting to where you should be. And, and how... Uh, difficult is it sometimes to uh, break bad habits when it comes to cuts for receivers because sometimes uh, that's one of the most difficult things to, to teach because there's a lot of drifting at times with the younger receivers isn't there exactly I mean that's why we emphasize it uh, it usually depends on how quickly you can get them I mean the later we wait to correct the habit the harder it is obviously uh, these high school coaches are starting to do a really big job of getting to them early and it makes our job a lot easier when you get them a little bit later but it is something that is very very difficult and like you say very important okay well let's get to the first drill good 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 nice soft hands nice soft hands that's it Johnny had a boy so this is the first of two concentration drills here, Mark. Uh, tell us what we're trying to achieve here with these receivers. Uh, again, concentration drill, but we're forcing the kid forces the kids to use what is called a, is a diamond. So you had the, the hands form a diamond, uh, and it doesn't. It allows you to uh, prevent the ball from getting into your body, which is what, what we're trying to do. So they catch it with it in the diamond and tuck it away, all all without touching their body. If it touches the body, sometimes uh, the ball will bounce out. So this is really a, a real good concentration drill. For for uh, improving the hands and, and, and working on the diamond, what they call the diamond. Not all that unlike what we see in volleyball in terms of setting a shot. Absolutely, and, and you don't want to catch it with the palm, same as volleyball, you want to use your fingers, so it's mostly fingers making the diamond. If you, if you hear that sound, it's, it's too much. You want to hear, like that catch there, you want to hear very little, nice quiet catch. And this is also something that you can apply to special teams on the uh, return game because we've seen so many times where you, well, not seen, but heard so many times that pop off the front of the shoulder pad. That's a good example. That's a great example. It's, you, you can tell when a kid's made a nice, clean catch, that sweet sound, you don't hear much, as opposed to what you're just saying there. We hear that big thump, and you know there's trouble following that. So. And I guess this is where you can also help a receiver develop soft hands. Yeah, very much so. And it's, it's a drill that we, I think we first picked up. Uh, um, Coach Jerome's been around a long time, but I think probably uh, uh, down in the states where they where they uh, they really work on the the, the little things and uh, again catching it away from your body is really big as a receiver. So. You guys back there catch it. Ready? Here we go. go. Okay, how is this concentration drill different from concentration drill number one? It mirrors uh, uh, what you'll see in a game where one guy is providing some sort of resistance and you catch it behind him. So it, you really have to watch the ball. You actually lose sight of it for uh, a split second and then catch it. Yeah, uh, it forces you to track the ball and to concentrate, actually literally concentrate quite a bit harder than you would because, because that guy has given you a little bit of uh, resistance. This is about concentration, but does this drill expose any bad habits that you as a coach can break? Uh, yeah, it tells you if you're fading away from the ball. It tells you if, you, if, uh, if a kid, for instance, uh, tends to shy away when he gets in traffic. This is a great drill for if you're going across the middle, which uh, a lot of little, little receivers don't like to do, myself included, but it, it forces you, it forces you to, uh, to really concentrate and to bring the ball in. And the, the more resistance the guy can give you, he doesn't have to touch you. He just has to uh, sort of block your vision. Uh, and that simulates what's happening in a game, because a lot of times you'll lose sight of it and still have to catch the ball. I guess a good uh, alternate name for this drill might be the courage drill, too. Yeah, across the middle of courage drill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bad people live in the middle. But, uh, <laughs> but it's a real good drill for the kids. They, re they really uh, it force them to concentrate. There you go. We got complimentary batters. Go! Tell us what this drill's all about, Jerome. 
Okay, this drill mainly is the emphasis is on the footwork. I mean, coming to a stop and be able to make a sharp cut, yet still giving the defensive back an illusion that you're going deep. That's why you see the really overemphasizing of the arm motion. And then being able to watch their hips should be sinking so that they can get an explosion out of the cut, which is the most important part of the pattern is getting that separation from the defensive back at the cut. So this is just a drill that overemphasizes emphasizes these points. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the arm motion because it's something that uh, I would think at the uh, younger levels of football, they're not necessarily focusing on when it comes to uh, receiving technique. How important is it that there's power put into that arm motion to make the turns and cuts? It is very important. That, like Number one reason why you said is the power because it accentuates the running side. And number two is to give the illusion to the defensive backs. A lot of people have the potential or the, the habit is when they're slowing down or stopping to make a cut, the arms fly out. It's like you're breaking or something like that. And as much as we'd like to think, defensive players aren't stupid. So if they see that, then the defensive backs are going to stop and they're getting ready to break. So we always must give the illusion that we are going to be going deep. And that, you know, the arm actually really helps that. When you're talking about getting low on the cuts too, uh, how can you coach that? It, it's strictly like mostly it, it's repetition. Uh, I like to use the analogy is your legs are like springs, okay? When we get, like we were saying, you want to get separation, you want to get a burst, and the only way you're going to get that effectively is if you're squatting, your knees are bent, because that's where all your power comes from. If the spring's fully extended, it's got no power, or if it's compressed, then you get the explosion. And you try and give them illusions like that, so it gives them an idea of what we're trying to teach them.